There are many different types of prophets. Tonight, I just want to talk about five different types of prophets. There are pioneering prophets, there are judiciary prophets, there are prophets to the nation, there are prophets into the marketplace, and finally, there are intercessory prophets. Welcome to New Dawn Ministries. TV. So last week we spoke about the two main ways in how prophets receive prophecy. We spoke about the Nabi prophet and the seer prophet. If you are not sure what I'm talking about now, I will strongly encourage you to listen to last week's message. But tonight, we are talking about different types of prophets. So in my experience in the prophetic ministry, I've realized that there are prophets who are called for different functions within our society and also within our church. And sometimes the tendency as a up young and upcoming prophet is to compare yourself with another prophet who's functioning differently from yourself. And the tendency is to judge yourself and think that you're not adequate to become a prophet. But you might be missing something. God might be calling you to become a different type of prophet. Now, in this episode, I want to talk about five different types of prophets. And I'll be taking my inspiration from the Word of God. The first type of uh, prophet I want to talk about it is the pioneering prophet. Moses was such a prophet who was a pioneering prophet. God has established Moses to become a pioneering prophet. A pioneering prophet is someone who establishes systems, movement, or churches. In the case of Moses, um, Moses was asked by God to establish a tabernacle, um, the Ark of the Covenant, and also the Levitical laws. And these were things that were given to Moses and God showed him in a vision that he ought to establish them. And this then marked Moses as a pioneering prophet. A pioneering prophet is someone who has a very strong leadership skills and ability. It is someone who is able to groom and build others to function in their full capacity. Now look at Moses, he was able to develop Caleb and also um, Joshua to name the few. So pioneering prophet is people who are called by God to establish and mark a certain path. Amen. The second type of prophet that I want to talk about, it is the judiciary prophet. Now, if you go with me to the book of Judges chapter 4, and I'll be reading two verses. I'll read verse 4 and also verse 5. And it reads as follows in NIV. Now Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Lapidoth, was leading Israel at that time. She held court under the palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in the hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went to her to have their disputes decided. Hallelujah. So God established Deborah as one of the prophetess in the nation of Israel. And the Bible tells us that she will sit under the, under the palm tree and all the Israel will go to her for a judiciary uh, um, um, council. So she was a prophet and yet she rendered a judiciary uh, service. She was a judge. So the Israelites will go to her and tap into her wisdom. For if some of the Israelites were crying out for justice. And God had given this woman an incredible wisdom to be able to listen to the people and tap into her own prophetic gift and render justice for those who sought to receive justice. A third type of a prophet that I want to talk to you about is a prophet to the nations. So if you go with me to the book of Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 10, it says, See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and also to plant. Amen. So Jeremiah was 
different from Deborah and he was also different from Moses. For Jeremiah was also a prophet, but he was a prophet called to the nations. So sometimes God can anoint an individual, a woman or man, and, and establish them to become prophets to the nations. So these are the prophets who receive insight con, uh, about nations. And let me say something about nations. Nations are, are, are something that is very important and special to the heart of God. When God looks at the nation, he has a plan, he has a purpose for that particular nation. And as such, God will then raise up a man or a woman who will speak on that towards that nation on behalf of God. And these are prophets who are called into the nations. Now, prophets who are called to the nations, I mean, they will prophesy. God just gives them understanding and revelations concerning nations. Jeremiah, in specifically, he was given a warning to go and speak to the children of Israel. And he was giving them a warning that there is a nation that will come and overthrow them and they needed to repent. And if they were not going to repent, God was going to use a different nation to conquer the Israelites because of their sins. So a national prophet is someone that gets established by God. And a, a, a prophet who's called to the nations, sometimes they can also um, um, declare a, a, a breakthrough. Um, I like it how it says it's here. It's God says, I've called you to uproot and to tear down. What, does, what do they tear down? They tear down uh, poverty, corruption, crime, um, oppression, and so on, things that are, 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 are of a national concern. But they are also are called to build and also to plant. They build people, they build nations, they build um, um, institutions, and they also plant. So a prophet who's called to the nation, they are also empowered by God to declare a, a revival upon the nation, a peace upon the nation, and also prosperity upon a nation. Number four, a prophet who is called to the marketplace. I could not think of any uh, better person other than Daniel. So Daniel was a prophet anointed by God to go and speak to the marketplace. Daniel brought about the presence and the fear of God in whatever he did. I mean, Daniel was called to become one of the leaders in the nation of Babylon. And God had appointed, appointed him and God had placed him strategically into the leadership of Babylon so that he can demonstrate the power of God. These are prophets who are called by God to go into the marketplace and proclaim the excellency, the wisdom, the understanding, and the power of God. Hallelujah. Now, prophets are called into the marketplace. They are not called there so that they can just become prosperous and, and, and it ends there. But they are there to proclaim and to influence policy, to influence a direction, to also speak prophetically to the kings and the presidents and the prime ministers. So if you sense that God has called you into the marketplace, always remember you are going there with a mandate that comes from God. In fact, you have been deployed from the kingdom of God to go and influence policy and the strategic direction of an institution, a government, um, um, or, or a company. So these are the prophets who are called into the marketplace. And finally, we get to the intercessory prophets. Um, if you go to the book of Luke chapter 2, I want to read verse 36 and verse 37, and it reads as follows. There was also a prophet, Anna, the daughter of Penuel, of the tribe of Asher. She was very old. She had lived with her husband seven years after her marriage and then was a widow until she was 84 years old. She never left the temple but worshipped night and day, fasting and praying. Hallelujah. These are the prophets in the closet. These are the prophets that are, don't, that, are, that are not seen in public. 
However, their ministry, it is so powerful, it is so necessary. This is a ministry of intercession. And they specialize in this ministry. And God has given them grace to be able to labor in fasting, in worship, and also in prayer. Um, um, for long hours sometimes. I mean, in this case, we hear that Anna practically stayed at the temple for all of her life. And God gave her grace because she was crying out for the liberation of Jerusalem. And God gave her grace by showing her the Messiah. And the Messiah was the answer of her prayers. She labored in prayer. These are the prophets that I call, they, they labor in the closet, they labor in private, but their prayers are able to move things. Things shift, things move. These are prophets that are hidden. We don't know their names, we don't see them, um, 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 but they are there and we rely on their intercession and on their prayers. And these prophets also, these are the watchmen or the watchwomen. They are able to see things in the spirit and they are able to go into the closet and they can labor for hours in prayer, in groanings, in supplications and intercessions. And these are the prophets who really God um, um, treasures so highly because their ministry really is to engage in intercession. They don't receive praises of men. They are not seen on YouTube or on Facebook. These are prophets who are hidden, but they are there. So these are the five types of different types of prophets. So sometimes when you are a prophet and you're called to be a prophet and you're looking at other prophets, you might be tempted to compare yourself to them. Remember, you are running your own lane. And also remember that a prophetic ministry, it is a journey. You are not just born a prophet and then all of a sudden you are functioning at the peak of your ministry, but God will take you through a process. And that's another topic for another day. Father, we thank you for this time. We give you praise and glory. And I pray, oh God, that you raise prophets and prophetess who will rise up and speak to the nation and speak to men and speak to president and kings in the name of Jesus. That you raise prophetic intercessors who will stand in the gap for our nation. In the name of Jesus I pray. Amen and amen.